Lola, Lola Rent, or Run Lola Run, the 1998 movie, review and thoughts. So, I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. This video will have some jokes, and I will get into some serious topics. Now, if you're looking for a review that, like, you know, the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by little movies, because of that, it's not that much fun to watch today. Whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. And, yeah, I realize this video is long. I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review, most likely from zero spoilers. If I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so. Hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So, this movie is rated R, and so is this video, so, yeah, I might swear some in this, uh, you know, and, yeah, I've, really, the, the, the R rating in this, like, a lot of it is because of language, uh, you know, it's not, like, there is, you know, there's some there's some implied sexuality and there is some violence and, and and such but it's not really they don't linger on it the way that a lot of american movies do and yeah um that let's see so so yeah you know i i think the rating makes sense i don't think it would be quite as strong it's that thing of you know Intense situations, people swear, so it just feels, you know, it just, yeah, it makes sense. Now, yeah, so the, the, I have watched this once, and I just got done right before I hit record. So yeah, uh, the plot. After a botched money delivery, Lola has 20 minutes to come up with 100,000 Deutschmarks. And let's see, so the, yes, let's get into the writings. This was written by Tom Tyker, who also directed. And yeah, um, you know, there's there are a lot of characters in this, and many of them you only see briefly, and you still get a sense of what the you know, what they're like, you know, and, and some of that is that every so often we'll get this brief, like, still photo montage that shows, you know, this is what happens to that person, but even so, you know, that's not the case for everyone, and you still, yeah, you get a sense of who everyone is, and yeah, you know, when, when you only have one writer, it is, of course, an issue of, you know, is this writer good at all aspects of writing, I can't really comment on the dialogue because I don't speak German. I, I only, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of movies where they had to translate something, you know, in the subtitles and a lot of nuance is lost, so can't really comment on the dialogue. But, you know, like psycho psychological realism and just the, the scenarios that, you know, along, as Lola tries to, to get the money, you know, she comes across an, a number of different, like, little snapshots of life, and, yeah, they're, they're quite interesting, and it, it's good, because otherwise this, like, other than the technical aspect, if not for these little slice of life moments, it is basically a woman running for a long time, you know, so, the, yeah, Tom Tyker realized there has to be more than, than just that. Now, uh, yeah, that brings us to the direction, and that is also Tom Tyquer, and let's see that. Okay, so there's a there's a pretty major element about this movie. I don't, I'm not going to give it away, like you might already know, uh, you know, but I'm not going to give it away in the review itself. I'm going to get into it in the spoiler sections. Now, right, and, and um, yeah, some critic quotes. 
one person said, you know, there's a real club feel, which, you know, very true, the, the music and the editing, and, you know, not that a club will have movie editing, but, you know, it's, it's this kind of, like, it, it throws a lot of, at you in a short space of time, you know, someone imitating, like, the, 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 the flashing lights and, like, sensory, you know, input of a, of a club. And it feels like a video game. You know, I don't usually watch Let's Plays, but this one absolutely worked for me. And, yeah, the, the, um, there's a, um, yeah, the, the, um, yeah, more of an experiment than a film. The director sees films as experiments, and, yeah, um, that, I, I felt like that really, yeah, I, you know, I would say it's a, it's a successful experiment. When Lola gets frustrated, sometimes she will scream, an expression of female rage, trying to make things work out for her. Not feminist by today's standards, and the conversation between Manny and Lola in bed comes across as very gender stereotypical. Every single time of filmmaking is used in this, so, you know, similar to, to Crank, and yeah, really, really cool, you know. So yeah, animation, picture in picture, still photo, slow mo, different frame rates, like, literally anything they could do back in 1998. That's you know they're they're doing it at at you know at least once you know and and just yeah it works really well like and and I'm also you know I'm not gonna claim that they're like masterpieces but I do think that the crank movies work very well for what they try to do you know they they're not trying to be masterpieces which I'm not using that as an excuse but I'm saying what they go for in my opinion they absolutely succeed I've watched both crank movies multiple times and it's it's one of those things where like I actually I enjoy the movie more each time each time you know I've I've been able to absorb a lot of what's been thrown at me in previous viewings so I can absorb new things as like you know the the movies are absolutely made for teenagers for teenagers who can still take in everything on the first viewing but yeah I you know they're super offensive and it's the kind of thing where I think it's okay to be offensive, but you have to be, like, saying something. You have to be doing something with that. You know, I think that a lot of, like, Tarantino, I'm not going to say that he's, like, exempt, but a lot of what he does, yeah, very offensive, but he's saying something with it. He's not just reproducing something that in real life is offensive. He's actually expressing, exploring something with it. And I wouldn't necessarily, I, I wouldn't really say that Crank, uh, the, the Crank movies don't really do that. They they basically just, you know, it's, it's very throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And taking on those terms, they're, they're fun. And, and I would say, you know, those movies go much further in how like aggressive they are with you know these are this and those are movies about someone who has a limited amount of time to accomplish something that like you know if you like sat down if if you weren't watching a movie if you just sat down and thought about should should someone do this you'd be like no that's deeply unethical that you can't do that you know kind of thing and yeah um I, I don't think the Crank movies, I, I do think they owe a debt to this movie, uh, though I do realize there's not a huge amount of years, between, I, th I think there's like eight years between the first Crank and, and this, but yeah, those do push things further, I think it's also, yeah, eight years, I think it's maybe also like the, the just, you know, in, in America you can get away with a lot in, in movies. And in Germany, I think there's more of an expectation that you kind of have to have something where, you know, like Crank, yeah, you got like a lot of people saying unacceptable, don't want to have anything to do with this. But then you've got a huge chunk of people who are like, awesome, and, you know, the movie made enough money just based on that, where I think if this movie had tried to go as extreme, and I don't think that was ever Tom Tycor's 
goal anyway. I, I don't think it would have been you know, yeah, Germans, they just, they have a different way of, of looking at this. Oh, right, uh, yeah, the thing with how it uses all these different techniques, it's also very natural-born killers, and yeah, very true, and ah, uh, that's a tough one. I mean, natural-born killers, I feel like, is more, like, it has things to say, and it's, you know... <laughs> Oliver Stone has never been accused of being subtle, so it, yeah. Uh, I can't really, like, I can't, I can't say one of the, you know, L Run Lola Run is better than Natural Born Killers or vice versa. I will say that Natural Born Killers, like, the, the two protagonists are incredibly, like, gripping. You can't take your eyes off them. And I wouldn't quite say that Run Lola Run has that in, in any of the major characters. And let's see, so the um Right, and, and others have said it's like a nineties music video, also very true, and that's like this is definitely a lot of people are gonna take one look at this and like Nope, this is not, this is way too, like, my dad loves movies, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be showing this to my dad, you know, so the, the, yeah, it's, it's, but, but yeah, it really succeeds, in my opinion, it, in what it sets out to do, and, let's see, so yeah, the, the opening of the movie does a really good job, like, the, the first couple of things we see in this movie are not really, scenes, they're just kind of impressions, like it's stuff that you, you know, it maybe sets up ideas and, and such, but yeah, once the movie starts, you, you know, and it's very clear when it starts, you, you very quickly get a sense of what the movie is going to be like. I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits what came before, and yeah, I, I like the way the movie ends. And let's see, so the, yes, let's get into the characters. Um, this is, like, I'm, I'm not familiar with most of these. Like, I think Franca Potente is the only of these actors that I've seen in anything else. And, I mean, okay, it, not all of it is American. I want to, I want, let the record show that I have watched at least one other German movie with, with Franca Potente in a significant role. It's the remake of The Bridge, or Die Brücke. But yeah, other than that, like, when I think Franca Potente, the first thing that comes to mind are the Bourne movies, you know, so, yeah. And you, this absolutely is, like, you can understand why this movie like, basically got her the role for, for, you know, because it's just, yeah, she's, she's deeply compelling here. N not like the, the, uh, like, I, I wouldn't say it's like the best performance I've ever seen. It's not necessarily, it, it doesn't really get a chance to, to plumb the depths, but, yeah, for, like, Franca Potente as Lola, you really find, like, and it's it's good, because if she doesn't work, then the movie doesn't work. But yeah, like, you really, like, you don't really know, like, it starts with you being told, 100 grand, that's it, you know, hurry up, 20 minutes, that's it, you know. So, like, at that, you know, basically, it is the, like, a lot of movies... Especially if you go, you know, if, if, the, if the movie had been made, like, 20 or 30 years earlier, pretty much guaranteed it would have been further into the movie. We would have gotten to know the characters, and then something would have happened that would be, like, you know, so, so yeah, basically, it has to immediately get you on board with, you know, I mean, there's only so many ways to make a hundred grand in 20 minutes, not very many of them are, like, incredibly ethical, so you have to be on board, 
and just yeah, you know, Franco Potente, you know, the the energetic passion of the twenty four year old actress is legitimately quite striking. Whether running, which she does quite a lot of, or being less in motion, just you, you know. Not Julia Lewis in Natural Born Killers, but never meant to be. And just, yeah, like, you, you really do get this, like, I, I, uh, I hope I don't sound ageist, but there is just something about, you know, I, I remember my 20s. There's just something about it. It, it, there is this, this energy and, and just this feeling of, of, you know, even if you're in a ridiculous situation, you feel like, you know, you're not necessarily, like, super optimistic or whatever, but you're not giving up. You're not, you, you throw yourself into it, you know, and that's what we, we get here. And that's also something that's definitely, you know, if, if that sounds like it would, like, I, I get that some people feel like, you know, 20-year-olds, uh, they need perspective kind of thing, and the movie's definitely going to frustrate you if that's uh, how you feel. Moritz Bleitre plays Manny, the, the, I guess it's Manny, and she's, he's the boyfriend, and there is very much, like, he needs Lola, he is not great when Lola, if, if Lola doesn't quite come through for him, and, you know, it starts with, you know, she, she explains, it's not her fault, something went wrong, you know, but, if he if she doesn't come through for him, he he makes mistakes. He does bad. He does he does things that make the situation worse for him, kind of thing, you know. And the the you know that's obviously one of these things where like that's a there's a there's a for for very long there was this gender stereotype that men take care of women, but in more recent decades, you know, finally it's become socially acceptable to admit the truth, which is that very frequently men are completely lost without women, you know, so, yeah, the, the movie is in part about this, this thing, of, you know, and she is very much the lead, even though, you know, they, it wasn't her money that, you know, so, but yeah, he screwed up, she has to deal with it, and that's the thing, of like, you know, at the time, that was seen as by by some, I, I n not quite all, I, I don't think, but some said feminist. That's very feminist, which which is great. Feminism makes everything better. Uh, you know, it's it's the opposite of conservatism, which ruins everything. But yeah, you know, is it feminist because it's not really about her self actualizing. It's about her you know, fixing a screw-up that her boyfriend caused, you know, but, yeah, at the time, it was seen as, you know, oh, look, you know, a woman's the lead, and it's, you know, she's solving problems, it, she, she doesn't need a man to come and help her, kind of thing, but, yeah, it definitely, in that regard, it, the, the feminism of it is, is very dated. And Herbert Knaup plays Lola's dad, and I don't want to give too much away. I'll just say that he's another male character where the movie kind of explores the relationships between men and women. And, and yes, it is very gender stereotypical and there's no room for anyone outside of the gender binary. And yeah, like no, no, every, everyone appears to be straight. So, you know, but yeah. There is this this thing of you know are are men the providers? Can they you know can we be trusted to take care of other people, or do other people have to take care of you know do the the women in our lives you know can yeah can they depend on us or do they you know yeah or not? Let's see uh, Nina Petri as Frau Hansen. Not gonna lie, I'm not 100% sure who that is. I'm in order as Herr Schuster. Joachim Kroll as Norbert von Au. Luca Pistor as Herr Meyer. Suzanne von Borsodi as Frau Jäger. Sebastian Schipper as Mike. Mi Mike, I guess. 
not the best at German pronunciation. Uh, Julia Lindiges Doris, Lars Rudolf Herr Kruse, Ute Lubusch Mama, Monika Bleitreib, RIP as The Blind Woman, Heino Fersch as Ra Ronnie, Hans Petsch, RIP as Narrator. Now, I would say everyone does a good job and yeah, like it's it's it works way better than it should that we like some of these characters like they have almost no screen time and yet like I feel like I could write an essay about what that person is like from these very very brief impressions that we get but that they're, they're they're striking they 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 stick with you kind of thing and I I think that was a I I I think it would have killed the pacing if this movie tried to, you know, it, it hits the ground running fairly literally. Like, Lola starts running almost immediately. And, yeah, it, it really is just, it would completely kill the pacing if it slowed down and let us meet. And that's actually, you know, that's... When I when I did my videos on Crank, I talked about you know there's a couple of times where those two movies will slow down a little because they felt oh this character's so funny we gotta you know get a little bit more time with them and I kind of felt like ah you could have I think it would have been better if you if you kept the the pace at at peak level but you know, I, I'm not saying that that movie would have done really well if you had the the um the, the uh, photo, still photos, montages, but I think it really works here, and yeah, like, it, the movie is better for it. I, I kind of, I would be fascinated to, you know, if, if someone, like, edited it to remove the montages, because, like, I could see how, like, basically, they're not necessarily, like, plot-related, you know, they're they're thematic. They, they explore the idea of of this thing of you know can like the the what is what is fate and destiny and can can you change what is written kind of thing you know and and yeah it work it works incredibly well it really doesn't add to the plot you could easily remove it for that but I'm glad that it's it's there I think it was the the right choice and. It was, of course, also a way to save money. You know, still photos, significantly less, you know, yeah. Then if you have to shoot entire, yeah, entire moving shots, just, yeah. Now, yeah, so I mentioned, you know, that I can't comment that much on the, the dialogue. I, I do think that the 11 entries in the IMDb quote section are all good, but... Yeah, you know, it is perhaps ironic that although the word subtitles and subtleties are spelled almost exactly the same, subtitles can be a place where subtleties go to die. The cinematography is absolutely amazing. Um, it was handled by F Frank Griebe, who has 23 uh, credits total and is still working today, which is great. And this was not the first, let's see, this was the fourth thing that he DP'd and just yeah like the camera actually yeah I'll just there's a couple I got a couple of critic quotes when a situation is uncertain the camera's hand held and shakes the camera moves a lot runs with her when she runs at least some of the time and yeah like um, I have to admit it's been a very long time since I watched Michael Bay so I'll have to take Lindsay Ellis's word for it but she said that his camera is always moving and yeah, you know, the camera is almost always moving in this movie as well, but here I thought it actually really worked. It didn't just, like, give you a headache and make you want to stop watching the movie. You know, and I, I do, like, I, I watched, let's see, I watched Michael Bay movies from the, from the start up to and including The Island, and that is where I stopped. So, while I don't remember completely I have watched a bunch of his movies I I've watched more than enough to know that they're not my kind of thing uh, let's see yeah so the the um, and and there is also some great classic 
cinematography, you know, it's not all just like 90s flash. There's some stuff where like the the distance between the camera and the subject can kind of imply a distance not just physical but between characters like they'll they'll never reach each other they'll never meet which is something completely lost if you get the camera right up in someone's face and let's be honest there's a there's a lot of that around this time in in filmmaking and there's a bunch of that in this movie when it fits now the editing was handled by Matilde Bonifoy and she has 11 credits as editor. This was the first one, and... Oh, she edited The International. Very cool. But yeah, um, she does a, a really great work. Uh, let's see, yeah. Critic, uh, quote, The movie is edited to the beats of the music, and that's, also, that's part of why it feels like a music video, in addition to the, the style, other stylistic choices. Despite the extremely high number, let's see, there there are still a number of long shots, and yeah, just you know, fantastic work. Um, the the like it really keeps the the energy going, and then there's yeah, there are times where the camera will actually like. And, and that gives, yeah, yeah, the camera will rest on a subject for several seconds. And that has a very strong impact because it's like, okay, this must be extremely important because everything in the movie is important, but a lot of it is, is these very, very short shot lengths. Now, the movie, right, the budget was basically, you know, um, if you convert it and, and yeah. 1.75 million and the box office was 22.9 which yeah this this is I, I you know you you would watch this movie multiple times I'd, I'd watch I would love to watch this in theater that must have been an amazing experience and yeah they do a good job like it doesn't feel cheap you you know the they put a lot of that money up on the screen now the yeah and and this was filmed in location uh let's see yeah a, a lot around berlin and and yeah they found different places around berlin that you know yeah they just they feel like they fit the kind of, like i i remember i i saw someone point out you know if you know berlin you can recognize a bunch of these areas and you're going to be like that's not you're not gonna you're not gonna run that direction not if you have 20 minutes and you're not gonna you're not gonna go from there and end up there that's not a thing you know they they used the locations in a way that felt like emotional that worked for the movie it wasn't like realistic and I think that was the right choice you know it's, it's one of those like it's extremely rare for me to feel that way, but this is actually one of those movies that kind of make me want to go to the places that she runs. And, right, the, the music was handled by Connie, uh, Johnny Klimek and Tom Tyquer himself. Uh, right, and, and Reinhold Heil. And, uh, yeah, uh, Reinhold is still working. He did a movie just last year. Uh, let's see, Johnny is also still working, right, uh, um, did I mention, Reinhold has 16 credits as m music department for movie, 9 for TV, 35 as composer for movie, uh, Johnny has 44 as composer for movie, worked on uh, Matrix Resurrections, uh, which... Yeah, you know, the, the Wachowski sisters do like uh, Tom Tyquer and his, the, the people he works with, so that does make a lot of sense. And, let's see, yeah, and, and Tom Tyquer himself is composer on 12 movies, including Matrix Resurrections and, yeah, you know, Cloud Atlas, The International, 
Perfume the Story of Murder. Oh, I, I, I want to get a copy of that so I can watch it again. I really, really love that movie. Holy crap. The Just the French, just so much emotion in their movies. I love it. You know, there's definitely some, some issues with that movie, but yeah. Um, and, and yeah, there's 42 minutes worth of the music from the movie right here for free on YouTube to listen to. I recommend you, you do so. And yeah, original score, German techno, and let's see, right, and the, the, there's a critic quote, not only are the characters running, but the narrative is as well. The pounding music drives it forward. Very true. And it, it's one of those things where like you, I wish every every filmmaker knew you know had had such a great understanding and appreciation of what music can do for a movie as with this because it really it it doesn't have to be just background doesn't have to just be there because otherwise the movie would be quiet like you can do something really cool with it and just yeah and let's see right there's some really great sound design you know some of these things like go by fast so they have to make a noise that that hits considering that the the yeah it's moving so fast that otherwise it wouldn't necessarily hit now the movie is 73 minutes not counting the end credits 77 with and there's really no reason for you to sit through the end credits and so so yeah you know it is a very quick sit you know there's like I you can you can watch this twice in you know if if you know someone you know is like determined they're gonna sit and watch you know this, this three hour movie and you're like I, I cannot sit still for that movie for three hours but you got two TVs you know you can watch this movie twice uh, as while you're waiting for them to finish off now the yeah so the best element is probably the themes of free will versus determinism how we'll explore that is. Um, worst aspect, I mean, I, I would love if it had more diversity. I, I do really appreciate that it listens to women after, you know, a hundred years, well, I guess, but at that point, not quite a hundred years yet, but, you know, a hundred years of tons of mainstream media, you know, movies, ads, TV shows, mostly focusing on, on men, you know, and this actually, there's a character in this movie who expresses a, a common, you know, misogynistic thing that, like, back when we didn't really listen to women, a lot of movies and TV shows would basically be like, what is wrong with you women? Why are you so emotional? Why can't you just think logically? You know, so the, the movie is openly criticizing that. You know, it's a, it's a character we're not supposed to like saying that. So, so yeah. You know, really appreciate that. I I would have loved, and I get that that wasn't that big of a thing at the time. More diversity would have been great. Um, and I do, certainly I do think that it could have gone further as as the, you know, the feminist uh, thing. I, th I think it would have been great if there was, like, if, if Lola really self-actualized more than she's fixing someone else's screw-up kind of thing. And, yeah, of uh, criticism I saw, right, but, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. It's not something that ruins the movie. Um, yeah, something I saw a number, of other, a, a number of other people criticize, you know, a number of people think it's too different from the norm, and I don't think that's a problem. I, you know, what, what's the saying? It's a, it's a, it's a feature, not a bug, or is it the other way around? Anyway, I think you know what I'm getting at. I think... It just, it's not for everyone, and I don't think you should feel bad if it's not for you. I completely, like, like I said, like, if I had watched this as a teenager, I would have been just 100% bowled over. As an adult, I, you know, there are a couple of things that I would, uh, I wish that could have been at least a little bit better. But the fact that it's different from the norm, I think is just really, really cool. I, I think that we have to make movies that, and, and celebrate movies that are very different from the norm. I think that is how we improve the the craft. You know, otherwise we'll just get the same thing over and over, which, you know, there was a while where they Hollywood didn't really change the way it was making movies. And 
you know, then every so often you'll get like, um, you know, at least one movie that was hugely different and then a bunch of imitators of that movie, some good, some bad. But yeah, the, you know, this movie is like a firecracker. It's like a hand grenade into the, the norm and I love it. Uh, the thing I was most worried about was the language and culture barrier, and yeah, you know, there's definitely a couple of things, like, there's a, there's a thing that, like, a character is called, and I'm like, is that a thing? People say that? You know, but, but, by and large, you know, it does transcend barrier, you know, you can, you can follow this fine, you know, just make sure that there's, like, Subtitles, if you don't speak German, obviously. You're, you're going to be lost if there's no subtitles, 100%. Uh, now, yeah, the thing I was most looking forward to was Franca Potente, since her performance in this is why she was cast in the board identity, and a huge inspiration for Red Hair is Better for Alias. So, yeah. And, yeah, the movie exceeded my expectations. It's just, like, she's still incredibly talented. She did a great job in Die Brücke which was like from 2008, you know, uh, 10 years after this movie, 15 years ago by now. Anyway, you know, yeah, she, she just amazing performance in this. Now, the trailers do give at least a little too much away, both the minute and a half one and the two and a half minute. It is very difficult to sell this movie without spoiling anything, and I do think that the movie does, the, the trailer does a good job selling the movie, giving you an idea of what it's like. The cover and poster do not give too much away. Um, I wouldn't really say that the posters are, like, worth going, you know, looking up. Like, they're, they're fine. You know, it's, I could, I could totally understand, like, putting one of these posters on your wall to, to celebrate the movie. They're not, like, bad posters the way that... You know, I, I did consider putting the this movie up behind me, but I didn't want to assault your eyes with, just look at this, just, holy crap. Just, I, I don't, why would, why would you do that? What, what has people's eyeballs do to, to deserve such a screeching yellow covering so much of the poster? Anyway, yeah, the posters are good. They're not, like, stuff that you really want to, you know, make sure to, to look up or order one or something, uh, you know, uh, only to, to celebrate the, the movie, not to, yeah. Um, right, and here on IMDb, IMDb the, the, here on YouTube, wow, I didn't get enough sleep last night. Here on YouTube, there is one clip, there's two trailers, no, no neither a fan one, one music video, it's a fan one, and six review analysis, so yeah, this is, very not, and I get it, you know, it's from before YouTube, and it isn't one of those movies that, like, completely, you know, there's there's some pre-YouTube movies that, you know, there's a number of people on YouTube talking about, you know, but this isn't quite, yeah, I, I could imagine a lot of people know the stuff that this movie led to, like The Born Identity with Matt Damon, you know, which I by far think is superior to the miniseries, which was fine, you know, I'm, and I'm not judging it, I'm not, like, comparing them and expecting that one to be like the Matt Damon one. Um, you know, that and an alias, you know, I, I don't, like... Yeah, if you're familiar with Alias, you know the red hair. They even put it on the cover of the video game. I forget if they had a level where you had red hair, but, you know, it was like, okay, everybody loves the red hair. Red hair is better. It's just, it's a statement of fact. Now, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 93 on the tomato meter, based on 84 reviews, and a 90% audience score based on more than 100,000 ratings. The consensus, more fun than a barrel of Jean-Paul Sartre, picks energy, riffs on an engaging love story, and really human performances, while offering a series of what-ifs and a blood-stirring soundtrack. Yeah, and, right, and for the critic reviews, the average rating was 7.80 out of 10, only six rotten reviews, and... The average rating for users was 4.2 out of 5, so yeah. And yeah, that makes it certified fresh. And on Metacritic, it has a 77 out of 100 based on 29 critic reviews. 
and a 8.5 based on 250 ratings user, user score. Yeah. Now on IMDb, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's 778 IMDb user reviews, 700 without spoilers. I read the top one top voted 100 um i forget if i read the spoiler ones because i did i i had heard most of the spoilers before watching this and it still worked pretty well now uh, yeah so the the 100 most useful by popular vote four of them gave it a 1 out of 10 another four gave it 2 out of 10 two gave it 3 out of 10 six gave it 4 out of 10 five gave it 5 out of 10 three gave it 6 out of 10 15 gave it 7 out of 10, 20 gave it 8, 23 gave it 9, and 30 gave it 10. So yeah, you know, it's not that everybody loves it, but the most popular reviews are the ones that absolutely love the movie. And, right, there are 197 links in the IMDb External Review section. 84 of them are in English and not dead links. So yeah, that's... That's a pretty significant drop there. 7.7 .7 is the average, the, the yeah, the overall, 7.7 .7 out of 10 is the weighted average vote for uh, on IMDb based on 198,734 individual users. 31.6 gave it 8, 21.9 gave it 7, 17.7 gave it 9, 13.2 gave it 10, 8.3 gave it 6, 3.2 gave it 5, 1.3 gave it, right, 1.5 gave 1, 1.3 gave it 4, 0 0.8 gave it 3, 0 0.6 gave it 2. So, so yeah, very, very positively received. It won 28 and was nominated for 21 awards, and yeah, makes makes a lot of sense. And yeah, some of the yeah, so some of this was for the best non-English film, uh, or yeah, best foreign language film, and some of it was for editing, uh, Frank Potente, Frank Potente, um, the score. Cinematography, um, yeah, Tom Tykwer got for direction. Um, let's see, and I'm gonna go ahead and get yes, cinematography. Oh, thank God it didn't only say it in German. Beste Kamera Bild Gestaltung. No, that is the next to that. It says cinematography. Because, like, ca camera, camera, that makes sense. Anyway, um, yeah, it was it was very well received. The special effects, I, I'm not going to go super hard on this because low budget and it's not, like, there, there are so much worse, to, you know, it pushes the CG too far. But there are so much worse, you know, like... Spawn the the um ah, just yeah you know late nineties movies all throughout the nineties you know I I love Jumanji the the original I haven't watched I'd like to watch the the newer ones love it last time I watched I was like ooh wow that is not good CG you know but I mean it's very very hard to go wrong when you have an absolutely game. I can't believe I'm blaming his name. Robin Williams, R.I.P. You know, he is he is incredibly charming in, in that movie. And yeah, like the cast in general do do really well. You know, and it's just like, yeah, um, it is the the um, I'm blanking on the director's name, but I'll have it momentarily. Joe Johnston is really good at getting emotion out of a film that's very effects heavy. That's there's a lot of directors who are not like you've you've got amazing directors at evoking emotion that have no idea how to integrate special effects, and it just feels like what what are you doing? Just 
this is this is not good you know and then you have directors that are amazing special effects but cannot get emotion out of the audience you know and and Joe Johnson is is one of those rare that can excel at, at both uh, you know it's it's no wonder that like his career spans decades and like even if you know you might not love everything he's done but like you've heard of most of it at the very least you have like you know i'll i'll just i'll i won't spend forever on this i, sw I swear but you know honey i shrunk the kids everyone remembers that even if you know okay i'm actually not sure i've ever encountered a person who really didn't love that movie it's fine you know honestly put in the comments if if just if it wasn't for you just you know i'd be i'd be interested i, I swear i won't like get aggressive or anything but yeah the the you know, it's it's okay if if you don't like you know, Captain America: The First Avenger, it's, yeah, Juman, Jumanji, and just yeah, amazing like the Rocketeer and the the live action sequences of the Page Master. Not a good movie, but he did a really good job at the, the that stuff. Like, there's this sequence where like, let's see, I think is it maybe is it that the the paint is like covering him or is it like chasing him like a tidal wave I forget but something like that and like you know I, I don't think I've watched it more than once and I watched it back in 1994 you know I was a kid and I still remember like oh you know that that bit of just yeah um let's see yeah you know this movie does not feature that many effect shots that don't work M most of the like there is effect stuff that's you know a lot of it is practical and i really appreciate that but there is this there's like just a couple of things that are cg and it's like i understand that you couldn't have done that without cg but it's not it does not look good but it you no know, absolutely does not like ruin the movie it's it's a tiny tiny part of the movie some excellent stunt work um there's some I guess I don't want to give away. I'll just say that, you know, running in the streets of Berlin, not necessarily the most safe thing to, you know. And it does explain why, you know, I, I don't think I want to give away exactly, but there is an explanation for why she's running and not, you know, using some form of transportation. The actual reason is, of course, that Tom Tyquer wanted to see her run. You know, and and it's no wonder that he did. But there is an in in, in in universe in story explanation as well. It's not just like, what? Why are you not just getting? You know, I th I think uh, the IMDb goofs, uh, you know, point yeah point out why. Uh, let's see, right, and the um, yes, that brings us to the the rating yeah eight Lola runs out of ten and I could watch this again later today like this was amazing so just yeah um, yeah other than some CG it and and political and and diversity stuff it does really hold up and I, you know I would love for more people to realize this exists because like there's a bunch of people who went to, to IMDb to vote for it, but like here on YouTube, like shockingly few people have, have talked about it. Consider like, you know, it's not some lost film. Like I, I get, you know, why you might not be talking about, you know, like there's there's definitely some movies that are are very very difficult to you know. I can imagine it might be difficult to get, but I did, actually, yeah, let's see, I found, yeah, apparently, like, let's see, um, you can stream Run Lola Run by renting or purchasing on Amazon Instant Video, Google Play, iTunes, and Vudu, so, you know, there are options, and, you know, just, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed by how much, like, it's not, like, the most impactful, but, like, yeah, like, it got to me emotionally despite being so short, you know, like, it's, it's South Park movie short, you know, that's, yeah, anyway, that is it for the review, that brings us to the spoilers, so please only stay if you have already watched, 
uh, frankly, a lot of what I'm about to say is not going to make a lot of sense if you haven't watched. Which brings us to the very first spoiler section, notes taken while watching. So, yeah, we, we open on the, you know, the camera going inside the, the creepy watch, which I do really appreciate. Like, I... They made that super creepy. Like, if this was an American movie, the, the, that object would be cursed. Like, you'd be, the, the, you know, did did they make? I feel like there was. I did. I didn't. I only watched the first, and the and the remake of the. Oh my god! I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. Uh, I'll I'll have it momentarily because I know who's in it. The the original as well as the remake. And the remake came out in 2004, just trying to fill the otherwise dead air. Amityville Horror, 2005, that's it. I feel like there was at least one Amityville Horror sequel that was about a watch, or was it... Yeah, you know, I, I feel like if, if the movie was an Ameri American movie, 100%, it would be... You know, that, that would be the haunted clock from the, you know, just... Yeah, I, I really appreciate... That's, you know, you, you don't necessarily get that kind of thing outside of, like, European films, but, like, holy crap, it looks great. If you haven't watched the movie for a while, like, go back and watch, like, it's super great. And the, the mouth that opens and the camera goes in, you know, just, yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know, there is a certain, it, it somewhat offers an explanation of this thing because, like, I respect the reading that says that, it's not actually three separate runs, it's just like she's imagining all of this. And the the final one is what she goes ahead and decides on, because as she was imagining the first two runs, she was like, ah, that's not going to work. And so she went with the third one. I respectfully disagree. In the first run, she learns how to take the safety off a pistol. In the second run, she knows how to do that. How would you get, like, how would you even know if you don't already know that kind of thing? And if she knew, why wouldn't she just say, yeah, I know about the safety on a gun, you know? So, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, yeah, so, great title, reveal, you know, bad CG football. And it's, I, I get it, like, what are you going to do? Keep filming this shot until the ball goes in the exact because you kind of need it to move the way it does like you know i i was never good at football i've i've kicked a football a number of times it's not gonna go exactly where you want it every single time and you know it's a it's a film shoot like they have a limited amount of time to to get the, all this done so that they don't go over budget and yeah i can i can appreciate and it's over very quickly so you know but just yeah, the the title reveal Lola Rent and it's it's the people that that we got really close to that make up, you know, and the people that we get close to are the people that we learn more about over the course of the film, even though we don't spend a lot of time with any of them individually. And I like that Lola is animated before live action and yeah, so we get the phone scene, which I I gotta admit. The phone scene, like, it sets up the, the conflict really well, but it's kind of talky and takes a while to, to you know, for, for them to reach the, the point where they move on and start getting into the, the actual movie compared to the rest of the movie. But, yeah, I mean, maybe it was, maybe it's to ease people into that kind of thing, but... The, yeah, you know, she explains why she couldn't get there, get to him in time. And, you know, when, when he's like freaking out, she's like, Shh, it's okay, kind of thing, which, you know, a lot of women feel obligated to, to soothe when we men get upset, you know, especially men close to, to women. And I, <laughs> This got This has to be like a cultural thing. It has to be that the Germans think that it's hilarious that the words "the bag" are said like ten times in thirty seconds or something. Like the bag, the bag, the bag, 
the bag, you know, just, it, 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 was, you know, it was fine, it didn't, like, bug me, but it just, I mean, I guess that must have been incredibly funny for them, or, or maybe incredibly dramatic, but it's, I don't, I don't think I would have seen it in an American movie. Let's see, and, and yeah, you know, it is basically, like, Manny is helpless without Lola, and that is true of a lot of, of us men in real life. Uh, and yeah, he's basically panicking, and we get the first scream by Lola. And that is something, I, I do really appreciate that the female rage here is actually... You know, for, for one thing, like, for a long time, it wasn't even in movies. I, I think it was Anya Taylor-Joy who pointed out, you know, if, yeah, for, like, there's a lot of movies that don't, that, that act like, oh, you know, if, if a woman gets upset, she's just going to sit and cry. And, you know, and to be fair, you know, for, for some that is, and, and that's also fine. But, like, yeah, I think, um, do I want to give away what movie that is? I'll just say for one of her movies, she was like, you know, she, she, you know, she was going over the script, and she talked to, to the director, and it's like, okay, if this is going to be authentic, if I'm going to be able to play this authentically, I'm going to get angry, you know, this is a situation where I would get really angry, and, like, you know, can, can I, can I hit him? You know, can I, can I hit the character who's making me angry? And the director's like, oh, you mean like a, like a slap to the face? And she was like, no. I'm going to fucking hit him, you know, and she's just, she didn't say it like that, but that's the, the, you know, and it works incredibly well in that movie, and it was kind of funny that, like, I, you know, I, I gathered this from an interview, and, like, before she explains what it is, you know, the, the, the male, the male actor playing that, that character who was hit, you know, the, the, the interview is like, were you okay? Like, that looked like it hurt, and he's like, oh, no, it's okay. Wasn't in the script. <laughs> But you know he's he was he was cool with it. He was like you know it's it's you know but it's just yeah and and yeah you know this is a movie back to Run Lola Run. This is a movie that acknowledges female rage, doesn't treat it like a joke, uh, you know. So so yeah, I do really appreciate that. Let's see. You know, I, I mean, personally, I would definitely say it doesn't feel like it's you know, trying to make women look bad, you know, like, I would definitely say in this movie, the men come out looking much, much worse than the women, like, the women, you know, get angry, they, they have reasonable emotional responses, the men are, like, panicky and just completely useless and helpless, like, the, the, the sheer fact that he managed to leave a bag 100 thousand Deutschmarks on the train. Like, what? How? Like, I watched the, I just watched the movie, I know the explanation, and I'm still like, how did you even do that? Like, holy crap, Manny is, is beyond useless, you know? Like, basically, if Lola doesn't save him, he's gonna, like, he, you know, he's like, well, you know, I, I screwed up, I'm, you know what, there's a bank right there, I could go screw up again, you know, and she's like, please don't screw up again, please don't rob a bank, you idiot, and he's like, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, I'll rob a bank, you know, and it's like, oh my freaking god, you know, let's see, and, and yeah, you know, the, the, um, yeah, Lola gets into the, the room with, you know, the, the office of her father, and, you know, um, uh, I need the character name, it starts with a J, oh, tell me, wow, okay, so, I feel like it was J J Juta, but, apparently, IMDB thought she should be called Frau Hansen, I'm almost certain it was Juta. Otherwise, it might be really, really funny or really frustrating to watch. So, you're welcome, or I apologize. Uh, I, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna real quick see if maybe the, the maybe Wikipedia. Nope. 
I'm gonna go with Utah because I feel like it was Utah. She's you know you know it's this big decision and she really wants an answer from Lola's father, but she can tell Lola's upset. You know she needs so she just lets her and and I appreciate the contrast between that and later when she is you know when when the father has given you know a partial answer and it's a really frustrating answer and. You know, I mean, there is perhaps, and, and yeah, then she isn't willing to let Lola in, even though, like, clearly Lola wants something, needs something, and she knows that that's, you know, father and daughter, but, you know, there's, a, maybe there's a, a message in there about, like, it's important for women to, to help each other when men, when we men let them down. I could, I could imagine there's something like that and that's also like if the movie was made today I feel like it would you know there would be like a meaningful close-up on Utah and she'd be like you know what Lo Lola needs this so I'm gonna you know but yeah at the time it was but but yeah you know the the you know Lola asks you know talk, talks to her father and the father's like what is with you women today or why are you being so weird and it's like holy crap just yeah, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't deny claims that that was perhaps laying it on kind of, of thick, but it's a short movie. You need to to get the the point across, and just yeah, he's he's really really bad, and and it's again one of those things where like you know the the um what's it called like. She clearly needs his help, and, you know, he says later, oh, you know, I'm not your real father. Yeah, but you've, like, you've been raising her until recently. Like, why are you being so awful to her right now? And, you know, yeah, the answer is a lot of men really don't come through for women when women don't say and do what, you know, the... the gender stereotypes say, you know, if, if if women are not docile and pliable, a lot of men can't handle that. They just, you know, they turn around and run. And, yeah, you know, like, right, and, and we get the, the second scream, again, breaking some glass, and, yeah, like, holy crap, her father barely needed an excuse to abandon his wife and adoptive daughter, and... I gotta say, like, I never even heard the word before that, okay, did, let's see, does it, is it maybe in the MDB quote section, um, the, the word that he used to, just, like, say, you know, the, the, right, I'm just gonna briefly, uh, you know, the, one of the last things Manny says is, what happened to you? Did you run here? I mean, in a, in a, yeah, that's, that's one way to put it. Let's see, and, um, let's see. Okay, so the English word was apparently loon. To think that I could have fathered a loon like you, but you did, you jerk. Oh, yeah, your real father didn't even live to see your birth. Yeah, I never, like... Uh, right, I, there's, that needs explaining. I watched it with Danish subtitles. Uh, I was streaming it via my library site, and that only has Danish subtitles, not English. So it said, like, yeah, I guess, like, basically, cuckoo. A, a cuckoo's child. And I was like, I've literally never heard anyone say that. I've in, in my entire life. Like, I've been around old people. So you would think if it's just, like, an old... It's, sometimes subtitle writers just come up with their own slang for for movies. I've I've noticed that it might be one of those cases. But anyway, but but yeah, you know he like, and it's also this thing of you know the fact that he isn't her real father. That he, you know, there's no DNA, there's no blood relation. Like it's still like. You're just gonna abandon this this you know young woman that you've been the father of. I, I'm 
presuming, like, she ran to him, so she must have thought there was some chance that he would help. And just, yeah, he's he's not going to help her. Like, I, I get that it's an extreme situation, but he's not just, like, politely saying no. He's, like, freaking out over her needing this help. And just, yeah. You know, it, it is this thing of, you know, men not taking care of women's emotional needs or, like, physical and, and material needs. You know, again, after, like, a century of film saying that that was how it always was, that, anyway, um, you know, there's a lot of media that actually blames women if no man is taking care of them, as if, you know, I mean, by and large, it's not the fault of the person not being helped, it's the people who should be helping them. That's at fault if they're not getting the help they need. Anyway, the, the you know, so, sometimes not individuals, sometimes systems, but anyway, um, don't victim blame. So the, um, right, the, yeah, Lola does get to Manny, but it's too late. He, you know, she says we can run off together, and he says no. And, you know, it's it's basically like the reverse of her father with Juta, although we learn later that he also doesn't, uh, you know, he also won't run off, or, uh, yeah, help the, the woman. And, um, what on earth? Oh, right, right, the, yeah, we get the... 24 little hours it's uh, you know the the song what a difference a day makes i guess it's called and yeah the cop accidentally shoots lola and yeah then we go to the you know yeah end of first run you know both the first and second run end with the two of them in bed you know very likely post coital and that is when the emotion talk you know, often, often starts, you know, and yeah, the, you know, she asks, do you love me? And it is this thing, you know, I, I, it ends up feeling like she's needy, which I don't think, I don't think that Tom Tyquer, at least at the time, I haven't watched any of his recent stuff, I don't think he thought that Lola was, like, needy. I think he was trying to, to represent that, like, you know, and, and later we do also see, you know, Manny also, like, again, like, he's the needy one, like, he's the, like, she's basically, you know, like, she, she says it's, it's wild that we're together, but he, like, he gets way more upset the, at, at the idea, you know, and I do also like the line, you know, I wouldn't let you die. Let's see. Yeah, and you know, she says, You don't take me seriously. And that is sadly something that's true of a lot of straight relationships. The man not taking the woman seriously. And, you know, she says, Stop. And we go back, we go for the second try. And yeah, now we learn that Juta is pregnant with someone else's kid, not uh, Lola's father. And. Yeah, you know, she says, it's because I'm alone so much, you know, and, um, yeah, and, and that is the thing, like, you know, they're already in a relationship where, I'm not 100% certain if she is cheating on anyone, but she knows that when they're together, he's cheating on his wife, you know, so the, you know, it's, it's already been, the relationship has that, um, that element to it, that they're not going to respect the, the, you know, it's not going to, yeah, monogamy isn't completely respected. And now, uh, Juta is not patient with Lola, and, let's see, yeah, you know, we, be, yeah, because he turned her down, 
you know, male cruelty to women can sometimes lead to, to women being cruel to other women. And yeah, Lola understandably gets very frustrated and breaks some stuff in her father's office. We get the guard who's always talking princesses and queens and, and all this stuff. Yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and Lola knows the about the safety because of the first run, is my interpretation at least. And yeah, she robs her dad's bank, which, you know, you can understand in the circumstances. And I, I really love that, you know, she, like, she, you know, as, right before she leaves, she's like, I don't need the gun anymore. So she throws it away and she walks out the door and we get this great, like, distance shot. Like, there's, you know, obviously there's physical distance, but it's also this thing of, like, they, you know, they are impersonal. Uh, the, there's no... There's no way she could talk them out of violence. You know, they end up not committing violence against her. But it is this thing of, you know, there's, yeah. And, and you know, she stands there for like a second and it's like, oh no, what is going to, you know. And then they're like, what are you doing? Get out of the way. We're waiting for a bank robber. Did you not realize, you know. Because she's not like carrying a big, you know, sack with a, with a dollar sign on it. Oh, my laundry is done. You know, she's she's got this little garbage bag, and and she doesn't look like a traditional bank robber. So it's it's also this thing of you know men, um, yeah. You know, she said earlier, you don't take me seriously. Men don't take her seriously. You know, just in in general, you know, most of the men she encounters don't really take her seriously. So yeah, they're like, this, she can't possibly be the robber. And it's like, um, do you at least want to make sure that like. At least ask what's in the bag or something, you know. But but yeah, they're they're that convinced. They're just yeah. And yeah, you know. And and there's the the. I think it's. Let's see. I don't think she's shouting it. I think it's like her internal monologue. Wait, Manny. I'm almost there. And then he's run over by the ambulance, which. That's that's a very very dark joke, and I greatly appreciate it. And you know, it really sucks when that happens to you in Grand Theft Auto. Anyway, the the um, yeah um, yeah. So we go back to back to bed now. Manny is the one in need of reassurance. If I die, you would forget me, and you know we get the line. I wouldn't let you die, and the, you know. What if I was in a coma? I'd throw you in the water. Shock therapy. <laughs> it's just like that's a that's a great like. I've I you know I don't want to sound critical of like German like. Despite what you might have heard, they have a sense of humor. You know, it's it like that's legitimately funny. You know, and it was written, directed, and spoken by Germans. You know that. <laughs> What if I was in a coma? Which is like the the that's the familiar thing of like, you know, what if one day something happened and I was in a coma? And just the perfect response. Yeah, th chuck you in the water, chuck in the cold water, shock therapy, you'll be fine. Just wait. You want you want to go try right now? Like, I, I you know, I could I could put you in a coma. And the, the I'm not saying that Lola would actually do that. The the yeah. So we go the for the the third run. Because she won't let him die, and she roars at the scary barking dog, which that is like I'm I'm not scared of dogs, but I can imagine people who are scared of dogs would love to be able to like roar. Because also like it's it's a it's a little detail, and we don't see it in the animation; we just hear it in the in the audio. But like when she roars at it, it like whines and and like you know yeah. <laughs> You know what dogs are? They whine sometimes when they get scared. Uh, let's see, and and yeah, I, I like that the guy with the bike. He's gonna sell the bike for seventy Deutschmarks for the the homeless man because he you knows you know that guy has money. When the offer for Lola was fifty, and Meyer calls for Lola's dad because all the other times he was slowed down by the gang. You know, because he he ran into their car, and we do see later 
he still runs into their car. It just seems like, yeah, they all they all die in the collision. So it is this thing of, you know, some of the things fated to be will always happen. And I would be lying if I claimed that I hated the idea of violent gangs, you know, having someone hit their car like that. But, but yeah, you know, because of this, Lola doesn't reach her father because he goes with Mr. Meyer. That was also, like, legitimately funny. Like, all the other times, you know, he... The, the, let's see. Yeah, she she gets... And, and he runs into the car, you know. And this one time, he, she lands on it. He's like, Lola, is that you? Hi, Mr. Meyer. Are you okay? Not really. <laughs> Just, this is not my day. But yeah, and uh, <laughs> it is kind of funny when, when Manny and the, the homeless man, and it's this thing of like, dude, just don't yell. Run close, grab like his jacket or something, force the bike to come to a stop. Don't show him that you're there, you know, and yeah, so there's a bit, you know, he has to run after the guy on the on the bike for a little while. And... Yeah, you know, Lola goes to a casino, and this time, you know, this, you know, yeah, yes, third scream, each run has one scream out of, you know, female rage, frustration, this time, it is not only a release of the tension built up, it is also a help, you know, and I really appreciate, and, and again, not super feminist by today's standards, you know, 25 down, years down the line, but at the time, like, the idea, because, like, it's the stereotype, you know, oh, when women can't handle things, they're going to scream, you know. It's it's a misogynistic stereotype, and the movie's trying to reclaim it the, the way that LGBTQIA plus try to reclaim the Q word, or a number of African Americans try to reclaim the N word, you know, it's it's that kind of idea of, of doing, you know, and yeah, it actually works, and that is something, like, I wish that there was more of the movie, I wouldn't, like, I guess it wouldn't be the same if you tried to make a very similar movie today, but I, I kind of, I would have liked for there to be more of her, like, accomplishing things, like, a lot of the movie is her, you know, trying something, and then it fails, you know, and... You know, for something that's supposed to be feminist, that can get a little frustrating. Uh, let's see. So the but but yeah, you know, she manages to to win big at the casino, and let's see. Right, and and Manny gets the bag, and hands the gun with his gun hand, and yeah. You know, after like I think yeah, in the in the second one, Lola was like, "Can I catch a ride with the ambulance?" And the driver is like, "I never thought of it that way." Sure, you know what? I'm gonna open the door for you. Hop on in. Where would you like us to take? No, no. To, you know, she does just say, "Can I go with you part of the way?" You know, she's not asking them to drive out of the way. She's just saying, you know, I need to get to. You know, but yeah, and again, like it is legitimately funny that one that she says that, and two that the ambulance driver's like, "What? No, no, you can't. I am not going to give you a ride in the ambulance." But yeah, the second time she she gets ah, don't ask permission, but beg forgiveness. You know, so she just jumps into the back of the ambulance. And we see that the guard from her dad's place was there. You know, he had heart problems, which he had all along, but she didn't see because she wasn't slowing down to take in the the people around her. He's he's one of the only he might actually be the only person that she comes to realize that the you know cause cause all the other like the the still montages are for the audience's benefit. You know, she doesn't, she never learns that those happened. You know, at, at least not in the movie, po I guess possibly later, but yeah. But, but yeah, she, you know, yeah, that's the guard. And, and it's great because, like, when you think back, there are these times where he's, like, standing and he's, like, kind of, you know, he's, he's looking like there's something kind of, you know, so, so yeah, it, it makes, sense there's there's setup there i appreciate that and 
Manny, having gotten the bag back, got it to Ronnie, and they, they do the little thing where Ronnie is, like, asserting dominance by, I forget, does he, like, pat him on the head or, like, some, you know, something, you know, and and Manny, like, sort of returns, you know, he, he can't, he's not going to do nothing, but he obviously is not going to go as far, as, you know, but yeah. And then you have the, yeah, you know, basically everything is good now, and yeah, he... He he spots her. They they walk to to meet each other, and you know yeah every everything is is good now. Um, and yeah I I um, let's see the the um what was the word that there. I wanted to note, right, right, yeah, so, you know, we we see that, you know, oh, yeah, ultimately there's always going to be a car crash, but this time it killed six people, you know, her Lola's father, Mr. Meyer, the the driver, you know, the, the moped rider, and there were three gang members in the car, so, yeah. That's that's pretty dark. Um, not necessarily saying that it's like wrong, but just yeah, like either Lola, you know, there's there's three options: Lola dies, Manny dies. I guess uh, the guard probably dies each time, and the this last one, six people die in the in the crash the guard dies but Manny and Lola are okay so yeah it's that is a very dark reading of you know like determinism that like one way or another or hold on, yeah yeah determinism that that like uh, where there is death there will always be death anyway that brings us to notes taken before watching so yeah, you know, basically, Lola has the power to rewind time. It expresses a refusal to accept things going wrong in a way that leaves Lola without Manny. Whether she dies or he dies, you know, she is not willing to accept that. And IMDb Trivia point out, during the third sequence, after the head-on car collision, a moped rider rear-ends the white BMW and lands on the windshields. Most viewers do not realize this is the man who stole Lola's moped, so he gets his comeuppance in the end. I mean, Lola and Manny also steal, it's just that we feel sympathy for them, well, for Lola. And so we dislike the moped thief because he hurts Lola by stealing it. I mean, it's not like this is... You know, it's not like they're doing completely, you know, and she knew that he was a criminal. It's not like, you know, he calls and says, I'm actually a criminal and now I need this money. And she's like, what? You know, no, she knew. It's just that the, the yeah, she actually, she, she even knew that she was supposed to pick him up to transport the money. So it's not completely, yeah, it's, it's that interesting reading of morals where it's like, if it hurts me or if it hurts my in-group, then it's bad. If it hurts the out-group, that's okay. Let's see. Right, and, and some, some critic quotes. Manny is so useless. It's frustrating that Lola is so in love with him. I personally think that the idea is that that makes her look that much stronger, but the movie kind of plays them staying together as a happy ending, even though she deserves better than him. So, yeah, you know, I do agree with that point of criticism. And, yeah, more critics. That is an interesting departure, but what I find even more peculiar and noteworthy is that Lola and Manny do not succeed in their quest until they break their own instinctual habits by doing something irrational and unnatural which seemingly goes against their self-interest. For Manny, it's trading away his gun, which he does in a mad leap of faith that the stranger will not turn it against him. For Lola, it's when she commits to pausing in her run to comfort a dying man, despite the fact that any delay could endanger Manny. When these characters do something for someone else who has it worse than themselves, they are rewarded with success in their hopeless quest. The movie, which so far has played like an 
a moral punk anthem, sneaks in a surprisingly conventional morality of altruism through a backdoor at the end. It works. And yeah, very, very true. I, I quite appreciate that about, you know, I'm all about the altruism, baby. So the, yeah, really, really appreciate that. I, I do enjoy movies that are, you know, amoral punk anthems, but anyway. And right, the, the yeah, so, so some have said the, the movie is somewhat like a game because we see more than one attempt at completing objectives and it's it's very true like it does you know it doesn't feel like just like a let's play but yeah you you do get this yeah it's it's very true and and that's the kind of you know in 1998 you can you could make a movie out of like a, a video game and this is i've i've long said i don't think i should i, I want to start by saying I think it is possible to do good adaptations of video games into other media. I'm just not sure I see it when it comes to movies. I don't think they have the... What's the word? The running time and the pacing that works for a video game. You know, the... Yeah, the only good movies based on video games I know of are the two press start movies and the only good video games that are licensed for movies are the original Aladdin and the 2010 TMNT so it's it's not you know and and yeah I have not watched I have not watched the you know I hear excellent things about the recent series uh, you know some some streaming like I believe Castlevania, um, some something like that, you know, by the the bootleg universe guy. Uh, I at uh, Shankar. Okay, now I I gotta real quick bootleg universe. Adi Shankar, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, the the Netflix, I believe it is, um, hold on, Netflix, yes, moving on, um, that was one, and I hear really, really great things from anyone who hasn't had their brain rotted by far-right views about the um, Last of Us uh, adaptation. You know, I think as long as you have the running time of a show and this thing of, you know, you don't have to tell and, you know, you don't have to do the pacing that works for like a 90 minute movie or something and fit an entire game into that, you know, then I think it, it can work. But, and I will acknowledge I haven't watched all of them. Um, I guess the last time I watched one was like the 2016 Assassin's Creed movie. Yes, I've heard good things about Sonic 1 and 2, the movies. And the Super Mario Brothers movie, but like the people that I really respect the opinions of say, I mean, yeah, those movies are fine, but it's not really like they're not that interesting, and they they like, yeah. So I'm not really, yeah. I w I will say I I like a lot of the Sonic video games. You know, it's honestly, I guess if it hit Disney Plus, I would consider it, but I don't see myself going to a movie theater to watch a movie based on, on a video game. It, I've just, I've been burnt too many times, you know. I, I will say, you know, like I said, Press Start 1 and 2, masterpieces, like, literally the only thing, my my only criticism of, of them is how cishet they are, cis, uh, heteronormative, I mean, you know, I really wish that the, but, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. Um, and yeah, you know, the second one is substantially better produced, but the first one, it's not, it's not bad. It's just very inexperienced kind of, you know, but there's a lot of great jokes. Like I've, I've watched them, what was it, I guess a year or two ago and it just, they, they hold up, you know, it's, it's, they're really, really impressive. Anyway, um, yes, the, the... Jean-Claude Van Damme Street Fighter is a lot of fun. 
Uh, both of the old Mortal Kombat movies are garbage. Though, you know, I, I can't completely hate... Like, Paul W. Anderson, he makes such fascinating decisions sometimes, so I'm not, like, completely... Yeah. But, but no, uh, by and large, and, and, like, the old Super Mario Brothers movie, holy crap, like, I appreciate, like, once I, you know, uh, some more news did a video where they analyzed parts of it, and I appreciate it more now, but it is one of those things where it's like, why did you, why did you take a game that has a very specific identity and then change almost everything? Like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, at, um... Always Bet on Dunk recently did a great video about the Netflix, I think, adaptation of Death Note, where he defended that and he pointed out, you know, you know, he yeah, he pointed out the fallacy of saying that an adaptation that changes things is disrespectful. You know, I'm not saying that. I just don't really think that the things that they changed to were particularly interesting. You know, it's just like, why didn't they just? I get, I get why they didn't make a live action, exact recreation of the old Mario games. I've played them. I get that that wouldn't work in live action, but like, two D animation. Like, why does every adaptation like that have to be live action? Just make you know, and that's a, a thing. Like, certainly, you know, watching the trailer for the the recent Super Mario Brothers movie, like. You know, I'm, I'm some of these characters. I don't love seeing in 3D. To me, they're they belong in 2D. But like, you know, if I watch that movie, part of it will be because Anya Taylor Joy. I have never been disappointed by her. You know, there, there's definitely some weird choices made in like her performance and accent in New Mutants. But everyone has that, like, it's, they assemble this amazing cast, and then they have all of them do the, like, it's like, did, did someone lose a bet or something? Like, what was that? Anyway, but yeah, um, the trailer, you know, seeing all these characters with the right colors and the designs that fit, like, there's a reason that Mario is so popular, and a lot of it is this very bright, you know, colorful world. I, why would you, like, parts of, I don't remember exactly how much, but I feel like a lot of the old movie is, like, gritty. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, nobody wants gritty Mario. Just, anyway. Um, I'm exaggerating. Maybe someone out there wants that, and that's fine. Anyway, back to Critic Quotes. It's principally a film of small changes that cause larger consequences. Each time Lola bumps into someone, their life flashes before our eyes, and we see how a couple of centimeters alters the dynamic dynamic of people's lives drastically, for better or worse, a la butter effect. Butter effect. Butterfly effect. Butter effect is something very different. That's um, that's when you you drop your glasses into hot butter. And you don't have a chance to wipe it off properly, so everything like looks kind of weird, you know. Yeah, that has substantially lesser of a of an impact on time travel than you might think. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. So yeah, really, really love this movie. I I swear the fact that this movie is like half or a third as long as my usual videos on movies doesn't mean that I didn't love the movie. I just don't have as much to, to like, say about it. It's more the... Right, actually, I did maybe briefly... Um, there's a... Um, let's see... Right, and, yeah, apparently some... It, uh, briefly, I'm to be goofs. At least one person apparently thought that the... Um, um, that that the patient in the ambulance was someone that was only injured in one of the stories, not the the bank guard that was having chest pains. Anyway, yeah, 
Right, and and one one person apparently thought, you know, in the third story, if the homeless man used some of the money on food and 70 Deutschmarks on the stolen bike, there would be less than the full 100,000 Deutschmarks in the bank for Ronnie by the end of the film. However, given Lola's luck with roulette, if he came after them, they could easily make up the difference, you know. And... Uh, let's see... Um, huh, I could have sworn, was there really not, huh, I really thought that there, oh wait, right, it's not a, it's not goofs, it's the frequently asked questions, the, the, let's, yeah, um, someone asked, why didn't Lola use a car, she had a moped, but it was stolen. 20 minutes was not enough time to get a hold of a car and reach the bank. And that's, that's true, you know. The, the, yeah. And, um, let's see. Um,. Yes, that is that is absolutely everything. So yeah, um, let me know in the comments. You know what is your favorite? Let's see, yeah. There's a couple of different. What's your favorite movie that takes inspiration from a video game? What is your favorite movie with like time loops? What is your favorite? The, the you know and and. Uh, Please know, if you're gonna say that there's this there's this movie, um, let's see the the I'm gonna have the title real real quick, cause let's see she's in it and I know when it's from right yeah the if you tell me in the comments that your favorite time loop movie is Source Code, that's perfectly all right to each their own. Let's see, what else? What is your favorite just time manipulation movie? And what's your favorite movie that just does a million different bits of, like, filmmaking? You know, this, Crank 1, or Crank 1, Crank 2, Gamer, you know, yeah. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell, and it'll give you another 20-minute chance at the loop. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like a real playlist, a suggested review for us on screen, right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spell thoughts on a movie. And, you know, there will be no more videos this week. This was it, but yeah. Um, currently, I do one weekly video talking about my thoughts on one season of a recent animated Star Wars show, which, you know, I'm almost in completely caught up on those. I do a video talking about the most recent episode of Secret Invasion every week. Uh, one vlog per week where I talk about the most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of Scream Queens. And one video talking about the most recent one or two episodes I've gotten around to watching of The Bear. So... Yeah. Uh, right, and recently the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're luck. You can check out my back account as well as next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.